All right then, gang. So this project is coming along pretty nicely. We've got all of these different pages that we've created. We're listing the jobs right here and we can add new jobs as well. If I just do this and then click on add new job, we can see the new job listed at the bottom. Now, at the moment though, when we click on one of these jobs, we're just directing back to the home page. Now, ideally what I'd like to do is create a job details component and job details route so that when we click on one of these, it goes to a details route for that job and we can see details of the job like the salary and the description as well as the title. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna have to talk about route parameters. So route parameters are just a changeable part of a URL that normally represent the slug or the ID of some kind of resource that you're trying to show. So in our case, we want to create a job details component that is going to show when we go to forward slash jobs forward slash the ID of that particular job that we want to see, right? And this part of the URL is going to change dependent on what job we're viewing. So it could be one, it could be one, two, three, it could be some random long string. Either way, that part is changeable and represents the ID of the job that we want to view. Then when we use Sapper and we're inside the component that is going to use this, we can access that route parameter to send a request to the server to get that job. So we can look through the data, find the job with the ID and return it to us in JSON format. So I'm going to show you how we can do this in Sapper. So then the first step in all of this is to update the links of these jobs right here because at the minute the link is just forward slash meaning it's going to go to the home page. Now we don't want that. We want it to go to forward slash jobs forward slash whatever the ID is of these individual jobs. So let's update that first of all. And to do that we need to go into the jobs index components. So down here is where we're outputting all of the jobs and this is the link right here. Now, remember, we have access to each job right here, and each job has an ID. If we take a look at the data, the ID is one, two, and three. And also, when we create a new job, we generate a random ID and add that to the object as well. So each job has an ID. We just need to output the ID inside the URL over here. So let's remove this and instead do curly braces because we're going to output something dynamic and I'm going to use a template string which is backtick so I can output the variable inside the template string. So I want to go to jobs forward slash whatever the ID is. Now to output a variable inside the template string we do dollar sign curly braces then the variable which is job dot ID. So that's the ID property we have on each job and now if I save this and preview we can see if you look in the bottom left in fact I'll open up the terminal over here or the console rather and we can see the href attribute right there is jobs forward slash one this one is jobs forward slash two and this one is jobs forward slash three so now we have the correct url structure however when we go to this it obviously doesn't exist yet so the next step is to set up a component for this route right here so now let us create this details component so inside jobs i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call this ID in square brackets dot svelte. Now the reason this is in square brackets is because this is going to be a route parameter and this bit right here the ID itself is interchangeable so this is going to fire up when we go to forward slash jobs forward slash something else right now this something else could be absolutely anything so what's going to happen is when we go to this URL Sapper is going to look inside this jobs folder and it's going to look for a component that is named this first of all right if that doesn't exist it's going to fire up the id one instead and then we're going to capture whatever this bit is right here and it's going to be represented by the id over here that's why this is in square brackets because this is a route parameter it's changeable and we're capturing that so now we can access this inside a preload function much like we had a preload function right here inside the index one, this thing right here, we can access the parameters from the page object. So what I'm gonna do is copy this and go inside the ID components and paste it in because we still need the module script and we still need the preload function, only this time we can get rid of this stuff inside and instead the first thing we want to do is access this ID, the parameter that changes. And we can do that by saying const ID and we're just destructuring here is equal to page dot params. Okay, so we're grabbing 
the page object and accessing the parameters on that and from that we want the ID which is what we called it right here the ID if we called this ABC inside the square brackets we'd grab ABC right here okay so that can be called anything before when we saw the dummy project that Sapper brought to us when we created a new project that was slug all right so this can be anything you want all right so now we have that the next thing we want to do is send a request to the back end and we're going to create a server route to handle that because we don't want this server route to handle it because it's a different route now it's forward slash jobs forward slash id this was for just forward slash jobs whether that's a get request or a post request now we need an additional server route so let me create a new file and again it's called ID in square brackets to notify that this is a wrap parameter. So we could be sending a request to a changeable part and then it's .json.js. And remember it's .json because we don't want to conflict with this route right here, okay? All right, so we're gonna set this up shortly, but inside here we want to send a request, a get request to that route. So let me say const and then store this in a result equals await and we can use await because this is an asynchronous function and then fetch and the endpoint I'll create inside template string so we can output the dynamic part which is this so it's going to go to jobs forward slash and then we want to output the variable so dollar sign and curly braces and then the id right here dot json remember dot json because we called it dot json all right, so that is the endpoint, jobs forward slash the ID, and that ID could change. And then inside the server route later, we're gonna capture that ID as well, so we can identify what job we need to send back. Anyway, we're using this now to fetch that data. Once we have it, we need to pass it into a JavaScript object. So let's say const job is equal to await, and then it's gonna be the response.json. Okay, and then eventually we will return the job inside an object. Okay, now down here, I'm gonna do my normal component script, and this is where we can accept that job as a prop. So let me say export let job. All right, so that's the setup done inside this component for now. What I'd like to do now is handle this request on the server. So to do that, let's go over to the server route. And the first thing I want to do is import the data, this thing right here, into this file. So we can search through it and then return the job with that ID. So let me do that, import, and we want jobs from, and it's dot forward slash underscore data. Okay, now we need to create a function and export it. And the type of function we want is a get function because we're responding to a get request to get data. So let's do that, export function, and it's called get, and we take in the request, the response, and also the next function. And inside here, the first thing I want to do is get access to the ID again. We already did that on the front end, but this is the front end when we're sending the request. We also want to now access this ID on the back end so we can search through the jobs for the job with the ID. And we access it in pretty much the same way. All we need to do is say const and then destructure the ID from request.params, okay? So over here, it was the page.params on the front end. On the back end, it's request.params. Okay, so now we can search for the job inside this array. And to do that, we're gonna use the find method. So const job is equal to jobs.find, and then this takes in a function. It cycles through the jobs, and it fires a function for each one. And inside that function, we return either true or false. If we return true, then it gives us that job back and it stores inside this constant. So as we fire through each function in the jobs, we get access to that individual job, which I'll call J, but you can call it what you want. And then I'm gonna check, does that job ID property equal to the ID that we have right here? If it does equal that, it means we have the right job and we're gonna return that job over here, all right? Now we have that, all we need to do is set the response headers and then send the data back. So response.set headers, and the headers we want to set are the content type, and that is going to be application forward slash JSON. 
And then after that, we want to send the response itself. So response.end needs to be in JSON format. So JSON.stringify. And then we want to send back the individual job. Okay. And just quickly, this shouldn't be a colon. It should be a comma. All right then. So now that is pretty much done. We're now accessing the ID when a request comes in. We're finding that job and we're sending that job back as a response. So now we get that job back and we return it. So we have access to it inside this file and then we can use it to output that data over here in the template. All I'm going to do for now is log it to the console. So console.log job like so. And now if I save this, what I'm going to do is go to jobs and then I'm going to open up the console and then I'm going to click on one of these. Now we get an error. So what I'm going to do is actually just open up my terminal and I'm going to take a look over here. Set headers is not a function. Okay. It shouldn't be plural. It should be singular set header and save that. And now if we go to jobs and then click on one of these, now we can see that job logged to the console. All right. So cool. If we click on a different job, then we see that one with an ID of one. So now we have this data inside this component. In the next video, what we're gonna do is create a template for this and output this data on the screen. Now also just very quickly before we do that, there is an error that I've made. So I just wanna rectify that. And that is if we go to the jobs and we click on one of these, then it works fine. We see that log to the console. However, if we were to enter the website via one of these URLs, for example, press enter up here, then we get a 500 error and it says fetch is not defined. Now, do you remember why that was? It's because fetch can't be used on the server. And for the initial request, we're running all of this code right here on the server and it's trying to use fetch. Now this should be this.fetch inside the preload function. And that basically wraps the fetch method so it can be used on the server as well. And that's why we had the error. So now if I refresh, if we were to go to jobs and click on one, this still works. And if we went to the address bar and press enter, that still works as well.